Hi everyone! It's no secret that one of the most popular building materials is bricks. The demand for products is due to its durability, high strength, and a number of other important operational characteristics. However, few people think about what exactly the technology of production of such a product looks like and what equipment manufacturers use for it. Let's deal with this issue together today. Let's go! Firstly, let's talk about the main stages of brick production, which includes six main stages. It all starts with the process of extracting and processing the raw material. Clay is extracted mainly using the percussion method. The extracted soil first enters special installations, where it is thoroughly mixed with various impurities. To avoid clay sticking to the surface of the conveyor belt, wood shavings previously sprinkled on the belt of the special machine are used. The next stage is the cleaning and crushing of the material. At this stage, manufacturers try to get rid of large particles in the composition of the obtained raw material. It is crushed as much as possible thanks to which the finished material is homogeneous and its consistency resembles plasticine. Only after these points can the mixing process be started. Fine grinding can be accomplished by means of charge rollers. A vacuum chamber is used for deaeration and thorough mixing. The batch feeding and separation of the stock is usually carried out manually. The next stage is molding, which is an extremely important process. It is at this point during the molding of the future brick that the bar is automatically divided into blanks. By means of fine rolling, the blocks can be perfectly cut and reliably protected against splitting. The fifth process in brick production is drying and following the cycle. Optimum air circulation is ensured for drying, which usually takes about 70 hours. And the final stage is firing. The molded and dried bricks are packed into specially designed carriages, where they are subjected to a high temperature of about 2,012 degrees Fahrenheit. And it should be noted that the quality of the finished brick directly depends on the compliance with the technological process, which implies the correct and gradual fulfillment of absolutely all its stages. Raw Materials for Brick Production It is clear that building bricks are a combination of clay and various modifying additives. The clay itself includes sand, illite, monmorillonite, and kaolinite. It is these important components that directly determine the quality characteristics of the finished product, namely viscosity, shape reduction after drying, elasticity, highly plastic bricks are characterized by resistance to fracture, while low plastic bricks are prone to delamination, sintering, in other words, the ability of the raw material to acquire the properties of ceramic stone as a result of exposure to high temperatures, also depends. During processing, the sintering temperature is 2012 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the type of clay. Such a significant factor as fire resistance, the ability of bricks to retain their quality and technical parameters under the influence of very high temperatures, also depends on the initial composition. Before proceeding to the molding process, various impurities are necessarily added to the original raw materials in certain proportions in order to improve the characteristics of the finished product. For example, if you add sand, ash, and slag, you can reduce the percentage of shrinkage of raw materials and make the molding procedure much easier. Wood chips, pulverized coal, and peat as admixtures will help to make the material lighter and add porosity. But iron ore should be used to facilitate the molding process and to change the color of the finished brick. Absolutely all components that are intended for production undergo a preparation process prior to manufacture. The preparation stage involves such steps as grinding, cleaning, sieving, drying, adding impurities, mixing, and moistening. Brick Molding In fact, several different types of molding can be used, but the most common are only two, plastic or semi-dry molding. As for the plastic method, very plastic masses with a total moisture content of about 21% are used for production. This method contributes to the creation of moisture-resistant blocks. To create a mold, screw presses with and without vacuum are used. The clay mixture undergoes thorough preparation, it is passed through rollers and a special mixing device. The resulting moistened composition acquires excellent homogeneity and elasticity, making it very easy to mold. But the semi-dry method has even more advantages. The fact that for the implementation of the method is used low plastic clay 
which contributes to the expansion of the raw material base. Due to the low moisture content of the clay substance, it is possible to reduce the drying time and significantly reduce fuel costs of the manufacturer. However, there are also a few disadvantages, such as difficult mold making and the fact that the finished products have a very dense structure. This semi-dry method is most often used for the production of face bricks. The finished blocks have a uniform color, clear edges, and high performance properties. Which molding method should I choose then, you ask? Definitely, it is selected based on many features of further operation of the finished building material. Brick drying process. Such a complex and demanding task as drying bricks is carried out in chamber dryers in which the heat source moves transversely. There are 13 compartments in this type of equipment. Before starting the direct drying process, it is necessary to perform some operations with the work pieces. For example, clean them from the remnants of defective elements, check the proper functioning of the nodes for supply and intake of coolant, humidify the chamber to the optimum level, and also check the indicators inside the compartment. The fact is that the temperature should be lower by four to six degrees from the indicators of the finished blocks. And only after all these indicators have been thoroughly checked, it is necessary to start loading the prepared units into the equipment. In summer, the unit is loaded starting from the axial fan, and in the cold season, it is loaded in three strokes simultaneously, batchwise to avoid heat losses as much as possible. At the end of the drying process, it is not recommended to leave the brick to stand for long periods of time, no longer than 24 hours, in order to prevent the development of structural damage and reduction of mechanical strength. Brick Firing Technology if we talk about the moisture level of the brick, it is usually about 8 to 12 percent, so to complete the full drying process, it is necessarily sent to the firing. By increasing the temperature to 1,472 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes possible to make dehydration of the clay composition. As you may have already guessed, this leads to shrinkage of the brick. This constant temperature, by the way, holds until the carbon is completely burned out. The temperature is then raised to 2,012 degrees Fahrenheit in specialized ovens. Under the influence of high temperatures, it is possible to change the structure of the final product. The production technology itself provides for uniform heating of the brick followed by gradual cooling. In fact, firing is carried out for 6 to 48 hours. If you strictly adhere to all these rules of the technological process, then as a result, the manufacturer receives high-strength blocks that have such properties as moisture resistance and fire resistance. And only then, the finished building material is packed and sent to the end consumer. General understanding what a bulldozer is, you can imagine the spheres of its application. It is used in construction, mining, forestry, heavy industry, agriculture, and in debris removal in case of emergencies. Moving rocks, soils, and other materials requires reliable traction for which the bulldozer requires a crawler drive. It is precisely because of the tracks, excellent traction in even distribution of the machine's weight over most of the surface, that this type of equipment is predominantly produced on tracks. Well, what about an unusual combination of a bulldozer and an anchor chain, for example? We must say at once that these beasts are ideal assistants for some tasks of deep clearing of wooded areas which other machines would simply never cope with. This large anchor chain attached between two huge bulldozers is necessary to pull trees of various sizes out of the ground, roots and all. As the bulldozers move back and forth, the anchor chain, which can weigh more than 20,000 pounds, uproot hundreds of trees and other unwanted vegetation with each pass. The chains rake the ground, also destroying soil, shrubs and trees which are then disposed of off-site by other machines. By the way, the chains also serve as a kind of shock absorber, easing the load of the bulldozer itself and preventing jerks with unexpected jolts. There are quite a few companies that are committed to helping with forestry, land clearing, and other operations, and all the equipment and services they offer are specifically designed for forestry and agriculture applications. Without making you wait too long, let's move on to the first unit, the Caterpillar D9 manufactured by Caterpillar Incorporated. This is truly one of the most powerful heavy crawler bulldozers, 
perfect for working in close association with an anchor chain to clear wooded areas. The bulldozer weighs approximately 50 tons and is powered by a 391 horsepower diesel engine. The dozer's blade is so good that it can be used for leveling ground, moving materials, and demolition. And it is very effective even in the toughest working conditions. In forestry and clearing territories with the help of the anchor chain, Caterpillar D9 is considered to be a simply indispensable machine to minimize the cost of ownership and operation, and to maintain high productivity of works. In addition, when two of these bulldozers pull a powerful chain, sweeping away everything in its path, an important factor is their strong, powerful frame. It is able to withstand and absorb the high impact loads that occur in tough working conditions. Moreover, for example, the Caterpillar D8 bulldozer model is a good partner when it comes to solving complex tasks in soil preparation and forested areas in general. With anchor chains and the process of land clearing, it will certainly cope perfectly. It's because the proven powertrain and automatic gear shaft provide the dozer with high traction and fuel efficiency. Plus, its 13.5-yard three-semi-universal blade is the largest standard blade in its size class, so you can do more work in fewer passes. Next, we will introduce you to another type of forestry equipment, rotary rakes, which are used for collecting and clearing tree branches after felling or during land clearing. They work on the principle of cutting and rolling. During the movement, an excellent system of rotating blades cuts and tears tree branches, bushes, and small trees. These rotary rakes can work in different scenarios, doing the initial heavy work or the final clean work. And here is the super powerful Gessner rake mounted on the same Caterpillar D9. Their robust and clever design ensures that they can carry the load, not just push it, allowing you to maximize the power of the machine. Gessner rakes are built for maximum durability, providing consistent performance, lower maintenance and repair costs. For dozers working in the harshest conditions, such as clearing wooded areas, where the job requires maximum operator protection, Gessner offers full protective canopies. The Savannah Global, the heaviest version of the roller shredder with a 10-foot working width, which is equipped with a transportable wheeled cart, is also the perfect companion. This shredder is considered heavy-duty equipment for a reason, used for shredding materials such as branches, leaves, hay, etc. The Savannah shredder is equipped with a hydraulic transmission to transfer power from the engine to the cutters for cutting hard materials. Another best machine for clearing and converting land in forested areas is the Roth H8D Harvester. It is ideal for logging, forest maintenance, and has special features. The double undercarriage with articulated joint in the middle of the structure ensures precise track following. And together with a leveling function, this harvester is very maneuverable and easy to control. The Tiger Cat 724G Universal Feller Buncher is the heavy duty tool on the market for land clearing and vegetation control. This particular machine is characterized by its speed, clear sight lines, and maneuverability. Ideal for contractors who need flexibility, this machine performs a range of tasks, from thinning high-cycle plantations to felling mature lumber. This specialized 60,000-pound capacity L60 forestry stacker from Wagner is often used in forestry applications. From fuel consumption to ease of maintenance and operator comfort, Wagner offers the lowest cost of ownership in the industry. The Wagner L60 Forestry Stacker can really last for years to come, you can rest assured. We would also like to say that large-scale land clearing initiatives benefit greatly from mulchers such as the TigerCat 480B. After all, this is the machine that can easily cope with difficult forest terrain and dense vegetation. In fact, it is a powerful tracked mulcher designed for demanding work cycles on rough terrain or soft ground. It is ideal for large-scale land clearing and right-of-way clearing. The 480V mulcher can be combined with the 4061 series mulcher head as a complete Tiger Cat solution. The best part? In such a demanding land clearing operation, 
the powerful Vermeer HG Series Grinder is a must-have. Its rugged design and features make it suitable for all large-scale land clearing, municipal waste processing, and composting operations. Various materials are used for construction or repair works, including cement of different types and grades. It is used for the preparation of concrete, masonry, plaster, mortars, as well as for the production of reinforced concrete products. However, few people are familiar with the technology of cement production. To correct this, I will say that cement mixture is obtained by mixing several important components, clinker, gypsum, and active mineral additives. Clinker in turn is based on limestone and clay and is produced by firing these materials at a temperature of 1500 degrees. Under the influence of high temperatures, it melts transforming into a granular fraction with a high silica content, and then it is fired again. Gypsum is necessary to regulate the process of hardening of cement, and in the finished composition there is no more than 5%. All other additives greatly improve the properties of the cement composition and significantly expand the scope of its application. Other additives may also be used in the manufacture of products. For example, oxides of calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, salts. But they are used in small quantities. They are added to obtain specified characteristics, heat resistance, acid resistance, etc. As for the technology of cement production itself, it definitely has its own peculiarities, depending on the method, wet, dry, or combined. Technology of cement production by dry method. I will say right away that from the perspective of economic profitability, this method is the most attractive. Apparently, that is why it is used in almost every large production facility. What are its peculiarities? Firstly, it is the dryness of components at absolutely all stages of work. The fact is that the production of dry method does not use water at all. And it looks like this. The basic materials, clay and limestone, are taken and then crushed with special equipment. Having obtained a powdery material with the help of pneumatic tools, it is sent to the kiln to undergo a delicate firing. The clinker, which is formed after this complex process, is crushed to the specified fraction, packed into prepared containers and transported to the warehouse for further storage. Of course, the production of cement by dry process allows for significant reduction in production costs. However, at the same time, it requires increased homogeneity of basic materials. This is not unimportant, by the way. In addition, it is quite hazardous from the environmental perspective. Wet Cement Production Technology What is the advantage of this method of making cement, you may ask? Firstly, it is the possibility to accurately select the required sludge composition, despite the heterogeneity of raw materials. Sludge in this method acquires a liquid consistency and it contains about 40% moisture. Before making the final product, the sludge is placed in special process basins to adjust the composition. It is here at this important stage that quality control is necessarily performed. If everything has been done well and correctly, the already obtained charge is sent to rotary kilns for firing. The process is carried out at very high temperatures of 1000 degrees, turning it into miniature grains. Later, they are thoroughly ground to a powdery state. And that would seem to be it. Nothing. But the wet method of cement production requires quite a lot of energy. However, there is still one considerable plus. With its help, you can really get a high quality product. Technology of Cement Production by Combined Method this technology, judging by its name alone, involves combining dry and wet cement production methods. One of them can be taken as a basis and the second one can be used as a supplement. Here, however, at different enterprises, these methods have significant differences. The fact is that everything depends on the features of the available equipment for cement production, proximity to the place of extraction of raw materials, as well as the different needs for the established grades of the product. If the wet method is used as a basis, the raw materials are first mixed and then dewatered in special dryers with filters until they are almost dry. And only after that, the raw materials are put into large kilns. What are the advantages of this technology? 
Firstly, the great thing is that heat inputs are significantly reduced, as there are practically no vapors during the firing process. As for the dry method, water is used in the process of pelletizing the finished mixture at the production facilities. However, its quantity is minimal. As a result, the moisture content of clinker that is moved into the kiln is about 10 to 18 percent. After grinding, the resulting cement mixture is sent for storage in large reinforced concrete cans, or more simply silos. They hold quite a lot, up to 10,000 tons of cement. There it cools down a little at a time, and the residues of free calcium oxide contained in it are quenched by interaction with air moisture. Thanks to this process, the technological properties of the finished material are greatly improved. Afterward, from the silos, cement is shipped to consumers in cement wagons, auto cement wagons, and covered railroad cars. White Cement Production Technology Speaking today on such a complex topic, it is impossible not to separately mention the issue of production of such a non-standard material. White cement, the production of which is moderately different from the technology of the gray product, can be produced both wet and dry. The main difference in technology is that the raw material is subjected to firing at a very high temperature of more than 1,000 degrees, and then quickly cooled with water. Clinker of this type of product is composed of mineral additives, gypsum, limestone, salt, and other components. The initial raw material is prepared from carbonate and clay rock, limestone, kaolin clay, enrichment waste, and quartz sand. Speaking about the biggest advantage and the unambiguous advantage of this type of material, it is worth mentioning its absolutely snow white color. However, if we compare it with gray cement, such production will be much more expensive. Today, the open pit mining method is most often used in the development of alluvial deposits of noble metals. Its main advantage is a higher degree of mineral recovery and relative simplicity of deposit development. Depending on the type of equipment used in preparatory and mining operations, there are several variants of open pit mining of placer deposits, bulldozer, excavator, excavator bulldozer, and scraper. However, regardless of the mining variant, the complex of processes includes the same set of activities preliminary, mining preparatory and extraction works, and at the end, land reclamation. Site Preparation When preparing a site for mining, it is mandatory to cut down and uproot forests within the site, removing technical and household buildings, build access to roads, and so on. At these stages, all mining companies use medium and light bulldozers. Mining preparatory works include site drainage and dumping to prepare the site for the development of the productive layer of the placer. And the main task of these processes is to remove waste rock and provide comfortable conditions for washing sands. Dewatering of the placer. You know, this is probably one of the most important processes. It's what makes it possible for the mining machines to work at high productivity and prevents losses and dilution. Dewatering is usually done through ditches. The most efficient machines for sinking these workings are small backhoe excavators or heavy bulldozers. If gold mining takes place in permafrost conditions, then preliminary loosening of rocks is of great importance during excavation works. In this case, sometimes drilling and blasting and mechanical loosening with powerful tractors with attached equipment are used. Stripping operations. The most labor-intensive and technically demanding process in the open pit method is stripping works. Their volume, depending on the depth of mining, can reach 90% of the total volume of processed rock mass. The main task of stripping works is to remove the so-called peats, rocks that do not contain minerals, and to organize access of mining equipment to the productive layer of the placer. It is in the process of processing this layer that the necessary minerals are extracted. The thickness of the peat layer can reach significant sizes from 2 to 5 to 20 to 50 meters. If the deposit is located in permafrost conditions, there is no need for heavy mining equipment. However, the majority of mine placers still have small areas and a small thickness of the peat layer. Stripping in such areas does not require significant movement of rock volumes. That is why enterprises and companies in these cases prefer to use only heavy bulldozers, often with attachments, for preliminary loosening. This is also where the Macon Industries T7, for example, Macon Industries T700, which can process about 300 to 450 tons per hour, 
the larger frame and heavy drum design allows it to work with coarse materials. An onboard hydraulic system drives the tracks, drum, conveyor, and leveling system. This mobile design allows you to complete all important processes much faster. In case of large areas of stripping works, thick layer of peats which require the movement of significant masses of rock, the excavator method of mining is usually used. In such cases, it is often expedient to use transportation schemes based on the use of excavators and motor vehicles. As a rule, these are heavy walking excavators and powerful dump trucks. Mining operations. Mining operations in open pit placer mining include processing of the productive layer of the placer, sands, delivery to the processing plant or mill, and removal of tailings. The main mining machine used in mining is the bulldozer. This type of placer mining is based on layer-by-layer -layer excavation of the loosened layer over the entire mining area. The use of powerful bulldozers such as the Komatsu D375 and similar bulldozers with mounted ripping equipment allows accelerating the excavation of any soil. The use of excavators in mining operations is possible only on melted sands. However, both bulldozers and excavators play an auxiliary function during mining operations to ensure uninterrupted operation of processing equipment. Actually, the organization of mining operations itself depends on the adopted technological scheme of washing sands enrichment. It can be carried out at a stationary plant or at mobile washing plants. In small placers, it is the mobile plants that are more efficient. One of the flagship machines is the Macon Industries SD600. This machine is one of the most reliable and easy to operate gold washing machines on the market with a fully welded tubular construction, a factory installed generator on the power screen deck, and large diameter skids for easy movement on wet terrain. The shaker platform is 6 by 14 feet in size, capable of processing 250 cubic yards per hour. The quick cleaning system and mobile design make the SD600 very user friendly. Dredge mining method. A special specialized method of placer mining is the dredge method. It is singled out as a special type of open pit mining. In fact, it is a floating mining and processing complex that performs the whole range of extraction and enrichment of sands of the productive layer of the placer. A dredge is a rather expensive equipment, difficult to transport and install, so the use of this method is advisable for placers with large areas and large reserves. The machine itself weighs about 1,400 tons so it will take 10 people to operate the drag. There are two kinds of dredges, continental and marine. The marine one looks like a ship that can move around a body of water. Development of gold mining on such a machine is carried out in coastal zones. In marine, there is no stalker and piles. The device is a system with a scoop that scoops up water with sand from the bottom, washes and cleans it, while not missing gold particles. This is the principle of the machine. By the way, the process is mechanized to the maximum. The dredge gets rid of waste itself, but the continental machines extract gold on land, so the fixing of the dredge must be thorough. These machines are powered by electricity or diesel, and there are examples of steam-powered dredges. The maximum working depth of the device is 50 meters, provided the soil is suitable. A bucket can lift up to 250 kilograms of rock at a time, or a chain of buckets can be operated. The inner chute is usually lined with vinyl, which is where the precious metal particles will be trapped. In an hour, a medium-sized machine throws away up to a ton of material, which is why the dredge is so popular among gold miners. Notch The wash tray where the gold accumulates is usually closed with steel grates to prevent possible theft. The gold is taken out every few days, and it can accumulate there from a few kilograms of precious metal to quite a large amount. The excavation is carried out with the drawing up of a report and obligatory weighing of valuable booty. All the material is poured into special containers, which are then sealed. By the way, the only disadvantage of washing is that dust-like particles are lost, and even large nuggets can be washed away, so the process is closely monitored by caretakers. Refining Although nugget gold sand may look pure, it is not quite so. It contains various heavy impurities. That is why all gold, after its extraction, must go to special refineries. The final purification of the metal by amalgamation or cyanidation and smelting of gold is actually carried out at such plants. After all the processes, it is poured into ingots which are used later to create jewelry, technical and coin alloys, as well as to obtain ultra-pure and other things.
The extraction process can vary depending on the individual characteristics of the stone. Its structure, hardness, monolithicity, homogeneity, the size of the deposit itself, the presence of cracks, and the ability to split. And what is separately important, before mining such a marble block, it is necessary to remove all excess rock. Where is the material extracted? To date for these purposes, it is more often used for quarries than mines. Basically, the extraction process takes place using specialized machinery. Let's figure out which one. Let me put it this way, in most cases, new marble blocks are extracted and processed with the help of far more than one kind, and not even two kinds of machines. For this purpose, stone cutting machines are used. They can be rope or disc, all depending on the size of the blocks that are required in the final version. Stone cutters with steel ropes, which act as cutting elements, used for cutting large blocks. Well, where without such a powerful technique in this difficult business, also need bar machines, which, due to the presence of a long blade, are used to obtain large blocks. And of course, do not do without circular saws without teeth, whose purpose is to cut blocks of medium size and tiny. The performance of marble machines is increased by reinforcing their cutting parts. These machines have several saws that can be used both to make horizontal and vertical cuts. Many of the equipment models are equipped with a system that allows automatic movement across the entire face on rails. The modern mining technology looks like this. Specialized machinery makes several slits and channels in the block, reaching up to 79 feet long and 10 feet deep. Afterward, large cranes extract the massive blocks from the quarries. Therefore, the raw marble is cut using a large saw with the toughest blade. Cutting a block of marble usually takes about 8 hours, considering its weight and thickness. During the work, the blade is watered with water mixed with sand. This creates the necessary friction and the stone becomes more pliable to the process of further processing and does not crack. But it's still not quite the presentable look of marble, wouldn't you agree? And for this stage of processing, when all the big technological machines have already done their job, the material is subjected to one of two types of treatment. This is either the thermal variant, when the stone is subjected to heat to high temperatures or pressure, or the mechanical option. This includes the process of polishing, grinding, sawing with the help of machines. In the next step, the piece of marble is firmly attached to a rounder grinder and only then the surface of the stone gets an even appearance, again using water mixed with sand and the rotation of the machine itself. But you have to get the material perfectly smooth, don't you? For this, a sanding process is used. Then, using a polishing wheel and special mixtures of oxide, oxalic acid, and tin, the material is polished. Do you think that's it? Well, it's not. The stone extracted from the depths of deposits is delivered to a stone cutting factory, where it is subjected to further processing. There, on special machines, the material is cut to the required shape and size. After obtaining a perfect surface, marble is offered for sale. In addition, marble sand and crumbs are often used in the national economy. As for transportation, recycled stone is mainly transported by rail. Transportation in containers is the most economical way, but this does not cancel the fact that other types of transportation can be used by air, water, or road. To safely transport the material from place to place, fragile stone is packed in special crates or a pyramid, two stapled metal posts. In either case, the structure is tightly secured with straps. To prevent the marble from spoiling from friction with the belt, additional packing material is laid between them. Another important condition is that the transportation of marble slabs is carried out only in a vertical position. Thank you for watching Mega Technology. We try to make good content for you. Every day we work for you. Video editor, screenwriter, designer, 
and content manager. See you in the next video.